Hi, and welcome to PowerViews. I'm Dan McDade, your host and president of Point Clear. PowerViews is the show that's dedicated to solving some of the toughest marketing and sales challenges today. My guest today is Ginger Conlon. Ginger is editorial director of One to One Media, and she's responsible for the direction and the day-to-day editorial operations of award-winning publications, including the executive journal Customer Strategist, online business publication One to One Magazine and its weekly digest e-newsletter, and Think Customers, the One to One blog. Additionally, she was recently selected as one of the top 25 CRM influencers you should be following by Zoho. Ginger has covered the industry for more than 25 years. She regularly speaks at industry events, and she has both contributed to and edited several books on customer strategy. Ginger, welcome to PowerViews. Thanks for having me, Dan. It's great to be here. Uh, great to see you as well. Um, I wanted to read the beginning of a blog. Um, I think it was a blog from, let's see, just last week, which I found fascinating, and I think it'll maybe set us up for today's conversation. And you quoted um, somebody from the Strativity Group by saying that self-service is the equivalent of outsourcing Tier 1 service to customers. So if they escalate by calling your context center, the service better be great. Um, I wanted to kind of launch into our conversation today first by saying that you and your organization are very customer-focused, obviously. So what's happened or not happened so far in 2012 that surprised you and, and how are companies doing right now and please them your customers? Well, let's see. You know, there's quite a mix. I mean, it's interesting to see how many companies are... Um, really putting a focus on the customer experience, but there are still plenty who are, um, there's a lot of challenges to, to make their short-term numbers, customer experience often suffers in the process, but we do see a great number of companies really focus on customer experience, customer service, and I think part of that is, you know, it's a combination of the economy that you know, over the past few years, combined with social media, has brought us to a point where you you can't hide from what customers are saying about you anymore. So you better deliver a great customer experience because, as we all know, you know it costs less to retain current current customers than find new ones. So you really need to focus on building those customer relationships and delivering great customer experiences to keep your customers that you have to have them recommend. You know, to make sure that that you know the comments are more positive on social than they are negative. You know, everyone has a megaphone these days, and um, you know, along hand to hand with this, one of the things that I've noticed is, um, and not just me, but you know, one of the things that I'm seeing really broadly in the market is, um, along with customer experience, companies are talking about trust. Uh, Don Peppers and Martha Rogers are calling it trustability when it's proactively um, building a trusting relationship with your customers. And I think because of social and because of the focus on customer experience, trustability and be being a trustworthy company has also uh, become kind of a hot button issue. A lot of the analysts are talking about it. You see you know, articles about CEOs talking about it. So this has really become a strategic issue. Yeah, I think I saw an article today in One to One Media about uh, I think it was Papa John's was it and building building trust with uh, their clientele and and um, you know uh, once you in fact not focusing so much on the first sale as focusing on the relationship that develops into a sale I think is probably the best way to put it. Right. Exactly. You, me you mentioned a minute or so ago, you mentioned social media, and one of the things I like to do is, is get our experts' opinion on, you know, right now social media, mobile marketing, and marketing automation are all really hot. Um, you know, how would you recommend that um, companies prioritize investments in those um, new media, and, and how does that impact the customer experience in your mind? Well, I think as far as prioritizing, I'm going to have to say it depends. <laughs> um, I think what you need to understand first is how your customers prefer to interact with you. How, how often are your customers on social? How do they use it? Where do they use it? You need to understand that before you make determinations on what your investments are going to be in social because if your customers you know, aren't on Facebook, do you really need to be there? Or do you want to be there to interact, say, with the press or what have you? I mean, I think you really need to understand what 
for example, social means to, um, to your customers and your other constituents. And then also, the same thing with mobile. Now, does every company need a mobile app? Maybe not. <laughs> but do, does every company need to mobile, mobile optimize their website? Most likely, because as more and more customers uh, are using smartphones and you know, the increasing adoption of um, accessing the mobile web, you need to be prepared for that. So again, it depends on how much your customers um, are using those tools and want to interact with you in that way. And marketing automation, yes, you should be using marketing automation. The ways that you use it depends uh, heavily on how you are going to be interacting with your customers. You know, I, you want to, you know, when you have um, the right strategy in place, tools, whatever the, whatever the tool is, whether it's marketing automation or mobile connectivity or social interactions, they're going to help you reach those goals. So the most important thing is to get that strategy in place and by understanding your customers. And I think this is where voice of the customer comes in and keeps growing in importance because you really need to take the time to learn about your customers from what they're telling you but also what you can find out in the market by listening in on their social interactions by understanding their web behaviors and things like that what do you what do you think about uh, there's kind of a, a, a active argument going on right now between inbound and outbound marketing and I almost feel like we're turning into a very reactive instead of a proactive world. Um, how do you, is there room for inbound and outbound marketing? Um, you know, what's your, what's your recommendation to folks looking at kind of the balance between inbound and outbound? Well, I think that word is the key right there, is balance. I think companies need both. And again, you know, where are your customers? What are the best ways to find them? Um, and then you can take that information, extrapolate it out to, well, where will I find my hottest prospects? And when you know, when you, you do some of that outbound, if you do the outbound well, sometimes I think that will help feed the inbound. Mm -hmm. you know, things like content marketing, things like interacting and solving problems on social, where it's a public forum, um, helps customers and prospects learn more about who you are and think of you when it comes time to, okay, I have this need, now who can help me solve it? So it's really being where your customers are and figuring out the right combination for you and for your customers of mix of inbound marketing. I think branding is important, you know, conferences are important. You need to be out there in the market for people to find who you are, but then you need to create those warm leads, um, especially today the way customers are engaging you so much further along in the sales process, so you really need to be available to them out in the market and creating those opportunities to, um, to create an inbound situation. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, uh, companies will uh, talk about delighting their clients and then um, you have situations where there's a lot of discussion right now about alignment between marketing and sales and, and really, I guess, a lot of discussion about the lack of alignment between marketing and sales. And I think it's difficult to really delight your customers if you don't have alignment. How do you feel? Is alignment getting better? Or is it staying the same? You know, where do you think we are right now in that area? Yeah, well, we did a survey a couple of years back that um, we asked about the alignment between sales and marketing because it's one of those issues that has just been around forever and will yeah. continue to be around for who knows how long. And it was interesting to see the, the disparity of opinion. I mean, there were people who said, yes, sales and marketing absolutely have to work together. It should be hand in hand. Um, then there were people who were saying, oh, it's two sides of the same coin, so there's some overlap, but they really need to do their own thing. And then there were a handful of people who just said, Oh, sales and marketing, they do different things and they should just do their own thing. And I thought that was kind of fascinating because I think the collaboration between sales and marketing is getting more and more important, especially um, now again because of social and because of the way buying has changed. Uh, it's more important for sales and marketing to collaborate so they can move up the sales process again, be 
be out where customers are and have a consistent message you know, across all the various channels where they're interacting with customers and prospects. And the only way to do that really is to collaborate. And you know, again, when it comes down to things like leads, that's, that's always a common um, you know, point of contention between the two. Well, you need that collaboration to say, okay, what is um, you know, a, a qualified lead? When is it a warm lead? When is it time to give it to sales? And when you have those conversations, um, it makes things more efficient. The, the sales teams, the sales and marketing teams, work together more closely, more effectively. And so, um, we, you know, we're seeing a lot more talk about that. I think now than ever before, because there are more tools to support that interaction, uh, and there's more needs to, to support that interaction. So, whether companies are doing it so much. I think there's still more talk than action, but I think because there's so much talk, there will be much more action in the near future than we have seen in the past. Yeah, well, I hope so, you know, because it's awfully expensive to be unaligned, and, you know, we see it day after day after day where, you know, it's almost like marketing and sales are on, you know, in, in two different worlds, <laughs> and um, I, I hope that the companies will wake up and kind of see how expensive that is here pretty soon. Um, yeah. What have we missed in our conversation? What else are you seeing right now that you feel like the audience might like to hear about? Well, I think um, one of the one of the questions that we were talking about bef before um, the call was that on the uh, you know, what advice would you would you give to sales and marketing folks? So on on the marketing side, I would say um, that you know, we, there's a lot of talk now about big data, and I think that it's really time to pay attention to pulling data together from all the various sources that you have access to, but making sure that you're pulling together that right data. What is the data that you need to support your business goals and to get a better understanding of your customers? Because um, when you have information about your customers that your competitors don't have, and you can do things for your customers, whether it's communicate to them in a more relevant way, present them with unique products or services, or customer support or experiences differently than your competitors can because you know what they want uh, and what's important to them at a level that your competitors just can't match and that will create a competitive advantage so I think getting that harnessing that big data is really important today and on the sales side I think really it's time to embrace social if you're not you know you should be listening in again as we talked about earlier the, the buy cycle is changing. Purchasers are doing a lot of research before they engage with your company. It's important for you to be further up the channel too, or up the funnel too, and be you know, in those online communities, solving problems, offering advice, sharing information, and being that kind of you know partner before the even before the sales even starts to start building that relationship. So when when it's time to have that sales conversation, it's it's not just about price. It's really there's there's a foundation laid there. So that would be two pieces of advice I have. I heard a speaker last fall, I guess it was, actually up in the Boston area, talk about customer surveys, and we actually did, you know, which is sort of shame shame on us. We actually did a customer survey that included prospects as well as ex customers back in November. And to your point, it was really enlightening. Um, as a matter of fact, that changed our messaging to um, kind of reflect what companies valued as opposed to what we thought they valued, you know, which was a little bit different. And, um, and in some cases, we weren't sure the customers were actually, you know, understanding how we were different. And they, in fact, did. Like they were pretty savvy about that and pretty savvy in how they used um, the advantages of working with our company. So I, I think you're right on with that. How can, how can folks get in touch with you, Ginger? The audience may want to reach out to you and, and ask a question. How can they best do that? Oh, sure. Well, our website is one to one media dot com. So, uh, you know, that's that's um, easy way to to find us. Also, um, my email is ginger dot com at one to one dot com. So, uh, you know, you can contact me anytime, and I'm on uh, Twitter at at customer alchemy. <laughs> And um, hopefully you're doing the pound FFs and the pound MMs that I see coming out all the time now. I'm glad there's only five days in the business week because I'd get tired otherwise, you know. Um, so, th so thanks again, Ginger, for being with us today. Uh, for now, this is Dan McDade signing off from this edition of PowerViews. Thank you for watching. <laughs>